Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Paranoia. This is episode 6. Last time, we uh, went to the new genetics laboratory above this old one to find out that they were working on genetically modified clone super soldiers. Then something went wrong, and some sort of signal from down here in the old abandoned laboratory caused all the clones to start killing everyone. So now me and my buddy here are going down to find out where that signal's coming from. And we're encountering all sorts of new zombie men, including ones with four arms. Alright, well that one's got five arms. Nope, four arms, one is missing. But he's also got claws. We still have to worry about keeping our stupid friend here alive, because he has no self-preservation instincts. Alright. Can't open this door just yet. Alright, what do we got? Bunch of ammo. Flak vests, some med kits. And some ammo. Make sure everything's loaded up. We're almost out of ammo for the Groza here, but again, we don't really use very much when we do use it. And plenty of ammo for the PKM. Let's move on then. You coming? Yes, Parkwood. I see you. Hmm. You're not going to get up or anything, are you? So he tells us we have to split up, but now he's just going to stand here and do nothing. How deep these shafts go underground. Every time we go deeper, we still find more of them. I don't want to get pinned against anything by this guy. They're fast, but they've got a lot of wind ups to their attacks, so we can still back away. Where'd the other guy go? No rats left alive. Hmm. Got a couple ways to go here. Oh look, a bunch of medkits. Oh Jesus. So this is sort of a mini boss. This is the only one of this guy we'll get to see. The gas mask Spider-Man. Woman, I guess. She doesn't look too happy to be a spider. But maybe it's just because the gas mask doesn't fit her on her head anymore. I don't know, I kind of like that this game just has those weird, like, one-off creature designs where you don't see the same guy again, even though they're not really bosses or anything. It's a lot nicer than having just, you know, copy-pasted the same enemy over and over again. 
but it's something that wouldn't really work in a longer game because, you know, you can only have so many people working on so many models before you run out of time. Alright, there appears to be a giant chicken with a gas mask hanging from the ceiling. Oh, jeez. I was trying to pull a Weeping Angel routine. Stopped moving when we looked at him. And the Major here really needs to work on his throwing arm. Unfortunately, because these enemies are still using the Half-Life 1 AI, they're not the smartest when it comes to navigating obstacles. Oh, hello there. Some sort of giant tentacle plant. Seems to be a bunch of dead people connected together by tentacle trees. Kind of like the master from Fallout. So basically this was the last four scientists that retreated down here to take cover. And uh, the virus fused them together into this fleshy psychic beacon that is now controlling all the other ones. And thus we've put an end to the psychic emanations. And all of the clones have gone back to being nice behaving little clones. Time to make our way out of here. Even with that problem dealt with, we still have the problem of the saboteurs. Who are using the mercenaries as a distraction. somewhere. I could have swore we left him out here somewhere. I guess he went this way. Wait, what was that? What? Has he become invisible? Think you're going? Oh. Yes, 
There's another unique monster design. Kind of similar to that one we saw in a cage, except that one didn't have an extendy neck. I don't know why his interaction thing was all the way back in the other room if he was over here. What are these instructions? They're like how to wear a biohazard suit? An RBC suit? Wait, what's down here then? Could there be secrets? No, no secrets. Now, I believe this is where we originally fell through the floor, maybe? Then again, all of these floors kind of look the same. No, we're still in K4, so it's a different area. What? Where do you think you're going? You're not getting away. Oh, apparently this is also secret. Even though it's just a health pack and some more AK ammo. Alright, into the elevator we go. Come on, buddy. Kulak. I, I pressed the button. So we finally discovered the final threat. I mean, there's presumably still more mutants down there in the lab, but that's not an immediate problem now that they're not organized in any sort of way. All we have to do is seal up the lab again, and that'll be fine. So we do have to watch out for soldiers now. Get our ballistic shield ready. Ooh, what's all this? Foreign saboteur weapons? Because these are definitely not Russian. Got an MP5 and a Glock. You can see they... I'm pretty sure that they use the same ammo? No, maybe they use their own ammo. The MP5 definitely uses its own ammo, but I wasn't sure if the other one did. So now we've got some more guns, and this one has a grenade launcher on it. Also, man, that is an impressive piece of machinery. Gigantic flatbed. I forgot you can't iron sight with this, it just launches a grenade.
That almost went poorly. And also, you can see that the uh, saboteur guys will will use their grenade launchers. That's such a pain in the ass trying to get ammo off of guys. You gotta find like the exact spot the game wants you to stand in. There we go. I guess this works. We're doing pretty good on health and ammo, and we've got eight med packs. Though this is coming up into the final stretch here. So it makes sense for us to be well equipped. And now we've got a helicopter to deal with. Traitors among our ranks. Okay. So now we've got to watch out for the helicopter. I felt that was a hit. So yeah, this is actually the final boss of the game. It's a helicopter. Down for the count. Oops. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. So that's it. All threats eliminated. We've successfully completed our mission. Now it's just time to clean up and we'll be done. I'm sure everything down in the laboratory is business as usual now. How are there still so many rats? I thought I killed all of them. And it looks like the doctor got what she deserved. I mean, to be fair, we never did completely clean out all of the undead zombie men in the basement. We probably should have done that before, uh, you know, leaving them alone. And that's it. That's Paranoia. It's uh, not a very long mod. We're only, what, six episodes in here. But, uh, I don't know, I think it's short and sweet. It definitely doesn't really drag out or become repetitive at any point, it, it's just, you know, it's a fun, short little mod. And it isn't just Gordon Freeman in a different location, it actually does play 
slightly differently. You got to be a bit more tactical, I guess. I don't know. I enjoy it. I enjoy that it's very Russian and reminds me a lot of Stalker. And it has the silly, you know, Russian rock music by, uh... There's, it's an actual band that apparently is fairly popular, but I cannot remember them off the top of my head right now. I'm sure they'll probably come up in the credits. So as you can see, it wasn't a super big mod team, though it is kind of strange that they would be making, you know, this kind of mod for a... for Half-Life 1 in 2011. Also interesting to note that they, uh, they did release... Oh, there it is, Slot. They did release a, uh, a GameCube... or not GameCube. A Dreamcast homebrew version of this, so you can play this on your Dreamcast. If you somehow still have one. Thanks for making the mod. So, this has been Paranoia. I have been Shadefire, and I hope you enjoyed me on my Special Forces mission. Hopefully you'll join me again for some other missions in some other game. Until then, have yourselves a fine, fun-filled, hopefully gamey kind of day.